Hi, my name's Dan, and today we're going to be going over the 2023 October release for Bookstack. Now, before we jump into the main features, there's one upgrade notice for this release, and it's relatively minor, and that is that many of the URLs surrounding user preferences and self-management, like the user edit form, a lot of those URLs have changed. So if you had documentation or guidance for your users of your Bookstack instance, then you might need to update that guidance or update any bookmarks that you might have that lead to these areas. And you'll see why these changes have been made as we jump into the first feature of this release. Now I'm in my demo instance here, which is a 23.0a instance, because I want to demonstrate some of the fragmentation that I've been trying to address in this next release. And that's focused upon user management and preferences, because as we've added more options, we've added this preferences area, where you can now go to manage your keyboard shortcuts and notification preferences. But then we've also got this edit profile view, and this is mainly sort of built for admin users to manage users, but we kind of dual purposed it so you can manage your own account through this. This can be quite awkward if you're not an admin user, a lot of the wording relates to managing general accounts rather than your own account. And there's in general quite a lot within this form as we go down to the authentication and API tokens and things like that. So I really wanted to kind of bring all this together and make it a much more intuitive experience to manage your own account when you're not an admin user. So jumping into a 23.10 instance, if I go to my user profile menu up in the corner here, there's now no more edit profile or preference option they've been combined essentially into this new my account area so i'll click on that we come to this new area where now we have a purpose-built profile form for editing your own account and then if you are an administrator user you still get a shortcut to go back to the old form if you need to do something specifically there but within this my account section we've also got things nicely categorized up now so there's a separate access and security area where you can change your password do mfa or manage your social accounts api tokens and then we've also got those old preferences views so the shortcut preferences and then notifications so really it's just about bringing it all into one place so you don't have to jump around or know which area to go through or what setting. It's just a new organized central area where you can manage your own account. And now alongside the addition of that new My Account area, there've been some changes to the original kind of edit user form that you'd still get to through the settings users area of the application. But when you come into here, you'll now see the external authentication ID field regardless of your authentication setting. So this is only really useful if you're using LDAP, OIDC, or SAML2 authentication. And previously it would only show when you have those options selected, but it can make it a bit awkward to set those options up. You'd have to do a little bit of a dance between your authentication options if you wanted to get that going while you're still using standard authentication. But now it's always shown here as a bit of a drop down. So I can click that to show the field and also describes its purpose. Also note this view is now only accessible to people that can manage other users. So you can no longer come into this view to manage your own account unless you also have permission to manage all users in the system. And then one extra tweak, if we scroll down to the social accounts area, previously you'd only see these if you were looking at your own account. But now, as long as social accounts are active, an admin user can come down here, look at someone else's account and see, oh, look, this person's got GitHub connected, but Slack is disconnected. So just a little bit more insight into how users are using those social options. So the next new change for this release is an update to the design of the editor interface. So we've got this page here. If I go and edit it, you can now see the design's changed. This used to be a kind of a full width interface, but now things are much closer aligned with that view page. So we've kind of got a similar card based design here that kind of represents the page that you're editing and the buttons up here align much more closely to what the breadcrumbs look like or other actions within the application. Then the little sidebar toolbox down the right hand side here is now I think a little bit more obvious to users when they come to this page. If we open that up, it opens up in much the same way. So your content shifts to keep some space there for it. And then you'll get the sidebar here where you can see your templates, your attachments, your tags and whatnot. And then of course these changes have been carried across to the markdown editor as well. So if we swap over to the markdown editor for this page, you can see we've got that similar card based design, but now it's just given extra width by default because that's to show the editor in the preview. And then we can open up the sidebar as we did for the WYSIWYG editor. So it's much the same, just a much more neat and refreshed design. And I've tried to make sure that there isn't too much extra wasted space in any of the changes that I've made, especially where it's most important. And from my testing on mobile, where space is most limited, you actually get a little bit more space. And it's because I spent some time optimizing exactly the paddings and everything to make sure you get a good amount of editing area on those limited screen widths. So hopefully these changes are welcome. It's always a bit nerve wracking making design changes to core parts of the app because design content is so opinionated. But I was getting some positive feedback and responses for the design on Discord so I'll put it into this release and hopefully you'll enjoy it. And while we're in the editor, I just want to show off one 
minor little user experience improvement is that now when you create a link to another item in the system using the control shift k shortcut that selection interface will now prefit a search based on what you've selected so as an example if i go admin page select that and hit control shift k this interface now pre-fills the search with admin page, which is what I had selected, and then I get relevant searches for that. Next up is a new command that can be used by system administrators. So this is the PHP Artisan book stack colon refresh avatar command. So this allows you to refresh user avatar images within the system. And there's various options for this. You can run it for a single user, or you can run it for all users, or like I've got here, you can run it for all users without avatars. So I'll run this, but by default, it runs in kind of a dry run mode. It won't make any updates, but it will tell you what users would be updated by that change. As we can see here, we can use a dash F flag and that will make sure the changes are made. So if we run it with a flag, it will ask us and say yes. And there we go, it says we're updated. So if I refresh this profile page for myself, and we can see it's loaded in my avatar image. And specifically, this is loading it from Gravatar, which is the default avatar user system set up for Bookstack. Although the avatar service is configurable, but one thing to note, this won't use any avatars from authentication systems like LDAP or anything like that. And of course, our documentation has been updated with examples of how you can run this and details of its functionality. Now onto PWA support. So PWA is Progressive Web Application which is basically a means of making websites act more like desktop or mobile applications in various ways. So this release adds quite basic PWA support, which sets some of the core items like the application name, the icons, and kind of the URL scope of the site itself. So it acts basically as a little self-contained item. So in this example here, which is on Safari on Mac OS, I save the site as its own app icon. And when I load that, it's now self-contained without the normal browser controls. And also it's done other things like pick up the primary color of the application so it blends into the title bar. because so that's something we provide as part of the PWA support. So yeah, it's not anything extreme like offline functionality, but it should help in those scenarios where you just want a self-contained book stack as its own little app on your system. And a shout out to Gamer Class N7 on GitHub for getting this started. So next up are some template changes that will be useful to those that like to customize via the visual theme system. So in the way that Bookstack is rendered previously, this header bar would pretty much all be within its own one big template. But within this release, things are much more split down into little individual components. So the logo will be its own template, the search box is its own template, and these buttons are their own template. And a common thing that was often done in customizations was to add extra buttons here. So I've added an empty template partial that sits about there where you can find your own HTML or template codes to be added within this area. And this is explained within the blog post with an example. So if you add a layout parts header link start.blade.php file within your theme folder with this content, so this is a little example for adding a tags link, then looking at my dev instance, you'll get a tags link there. So that's where that code sits. And on the topic of the theme systems, I've made some changes to the logical theme system and specifically around how error handling is done. So now if the code fails to initially load within your functions.php file, that scenario is caught and a much clearer explanation is provided back to you when you're in debug mode, since previously errors in that scenario where there might now be incompatible changes with the books like code base, those scenarios would often come back with a quite non-clear error message, which was leaving people without the knowledge that the error was coming from their custom theme functions file. And then continuing that theme of error handling, one area where Bookstack was quite weak at error handling was the image gallery. And one reason for this is because there can be a lot of errors around handling images. So we're dealing with large requests with facing system limits. We're using a lot more RAM than normal when we're trying to resize these images that get uploaded. So there's a lot of scenarios for errors to occur. So in this example screenshot here, this is quite an extreme example, but it shows all the different error messaging that you may now get. So previously there would be scenarios where the gallery itself wouldn't load anything, and that's because we were hitting limits that we can then respond to. So now that deals with that better, so it will tell you explicitly when there's an error due to hitting system limits. And the same on uploading, and when you're viewing a single image, you'll also get that response. And to further help these kind of error scenarios, there is a new option when you're viewing an image within the gallery. 
if you view the more options for this image, there's now a regenerate size variations item for the image that you're looking at. So you can click that and then it will regenerate the thumbnails for that image. So this can be especially useful if they fail to load and then you've had to change system settings to maybe increase the PHP memory limit. It means you can come in here, click that, and then it will fix it for that image without you having to delete it and re-upload it and things like that. So now on to translations. So we've got a new language option made available in this release and that language option is... Uzbek. So a particular thanks to this user for getting the language up to a good level of coverage. But upon that, as usual, there have been many translation updates. So a massive thanks to everyone in this list that has worked hard to translate so many words into different languages for people to use Bookstack. So a big thank you. Well, that's all the main things for this release. This release cycle was really more of maintenance release so there's been loads and loads of cleanup and changes under the hood and loads of bug fixes and improvements in all that areas otherwise in terms of next step i want to come back to these text boxes so in particular the text boxes like these descriptions where it's not just a single line it's usually a multi-line input where at the moment we only support just simple plain text and people have been requesting different formatting options within these kind of areas and i've always been wary of bringing in a full editor within these areas because I don't want users to get confused about where content should be. I think content should remain in pages, really. But I can see the case for having kind of simple formatting options within these areas, such as being able to add in links or boldening or italics and things like that. So I'm going to be looking about how we achieve that and also how we align that with comments, because comments are also a very simple text box at the moment, but they do actually support markdown. But I don't think that's a very intuitive and I prefer a more WYSIWYG interface first on those areas. So I'll be looking into how we align everything while bringing in the features that people have been asking for in these areas. Additionally, there's a few points around authentication that I'll probably be having a look at. So there's been a pull request made to add OpenID Connect RP initiated logout. So we can connect the Bookstack logout functionality with the OIDC systems logout functionality to create a more integrated experience. And also there's been a few requests for adding hardware keys like UUB keys and that kind of thing for MFA. So I'd quite like to understand the web spec there and delve into that kind of feature. Although I've been holding off because I'm not sure exactly how that overlaps or interplays with pass keys, which are growing in popularity. If you do have any expertise and specific knowledge within this area, then I would appreciate your feedback on GitHub issue 3912 and in particular to my comment here. Otherwise, that's everything that I've got to show in this video. I hope your upgrade goes smoothly and I hope you will enjoy all the new changes and features. But other than that, have a wonderful day.